Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. I'm reading through the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 2, and I'm up to Challenge the Hellmaker by Walt and Lee Richmond. This is number six in the series. We're going to take a look at the plot of the book. I'll give a rating. And then I want to talk about books that could have been in the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 2. Challenge the Hellmaker is actually a reprinting of a serial novel, Where I Wasn't Going, from the October and November 1963 issues of Analog. Analog is the renamed Astounding Magazine, and its editor was John W. Campbell. Where I Wasn't Going is set on a UN project, a space station. The station has just become operational, and attached to this station is a weapon called the Hellmaker. This weapon is a powerful laser from space. The UN has a security force which plots to take over the station and the weapon. They don't want one single country to control this weapon. We have espionage and plots and a team of scientists that tries to take over the weapon. This is a multicultural team. We have an American Indian, Mike Blackhawk, teaming up with various ethnic groups represented in the scientists. Written in 1963, there's a few cringeworthy sections where the authors try to mimic the dialect of these ethnic groups. There is an accident on the station. The laser fires and destroys a base in Iceland. Is this a false flag conspiracy? An excuse for the UN security force to take over the station? Or is it simply an accident? There's another convenient accident, a plot point, that allows the scientists to develop a unique form of propulsion for the station. Can the station be moved to prevent retaliation? Will the UN security force take it over? Can the scientists protect the station? And ultimately, will this new propulsion take them out of Earth orbit? This is a silly pulp story that I'm surprised was made into a novel. We have lots of science of the time about the space station, but the science doesn't even make sense. Perhaps it was conjecture of that time. An example of this silliness is the name that they give their computer. Let me read from the novel itself. On page 47. Sitting in complacent control of these overall complexities that must be met with automatic accuracy was the Starrett Analog Digital Computer Optical wave type 4463, irreverently known as Sad Cow. Yes, Sad Cow. And there's times that this computer moves. They also have difficulty communicating with this computer because they are not asking it questions in the correct manner. It takes things very literally. And I also want to give you an example of how this novel is cringeworthy sometimes and how it represents a culture. We have a Chinese scientist here speaking on page 195. He paused. Then, the people on Earth believe that we are mad scientist space jackers who kill Thules, Thules is the station on Iceland, and make Earth hostage. And I think even though Bessie and her cow, that's the computer, have thrown a monkey in to wrench things a bit, that it will take a few years down there before things come clear, and that we should be lynxed if we had the temerity to return. I think, he said softly, that we must become, in fact, the first space peoples. Then his voice took on a happy lift. Confusion say when lynx mob runs is best to high trail. Okay. So I give Challenge the Hellmaker 2 out of 10. Now there was something else that was very interesting in the back of the book, and I'm going to pull it up here on the screen. You can see they have an ad for the A Science Fiction Specials. I just reviewed number 6, Challenge the Hellmaker. Number 7 is Tournament of Thorns. And number 8, Fifth Head of Cerberus by Gene Wolfe. Well, let me get number 7 and number 8 out here. So here's number seven, Lady of the Bees by Thomas Burnett Swan. Okay. 
And here's number eight, The Tournament of Thorns by Thomas Burnett Swan. No Gene Wolfe. Here's a copy that I have of the fifth head of Cerberus. Note the spelling. Let's take a look at that ad again. And you can see that the name of the book isn't even spelled correctly. So number seven was supposed to be Tournament of Thorns, but this book was inserted. And then number eight became the Tournament of Thorns. What happened? I don't know. But it made me start to think, what books did they miss out in the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 2? I've been underwhelmed by the first six, with the exception of number four, which was The Invincible by Stanislav Lem. So, here are some books from 1974 that were first published in hardcover that could have been in the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 2. The Centuri Device by M. John Harrison. Dahlgren by Samuel R. Delaney. The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. Previously, they had published two of her novels in the A Science Fiction Special Series 1. Why couldn't they include The Dispossessed and perhaps even The Word for World is Forest? That's a head scratcher. The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. Inverted World by Christopher Priest. The Moat in God's Eye by Niven and Purnell. And from 1975, if they wanted a debut novel, they could have had The Deep by John Crawley. Or another writer that they'd published in the A Science Fiction Specials Series 1 was Joanne Russ. They published two of her novels there. In 1975, The Female Man came out. Arguably her best novel, Nostrilia by Cordwainer Smith. And let's finally look at The Shockwave Rider by John Brunner. Once again, two of his novels were in the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1. So my question is, what happened? There were a lot of good choices to be made for the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 2. This makes me wonder if Terry Carr had been retained at Ace, if he would have picked some of these books for a new line of specials. We will get to see what Terry Carr would do in the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 3. More on that in the future. But we have this stinker today. Now there are a couple novels coming up that I think will be good. I'm looking forward to the Bob Shaw novel, Orbitsville. And I've never read Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough. Are you one of the unfortunate ones to have read Challenge the Hellmaker? What are your thoughts? What do you think about the editorship of the A Science Fiction Special Series 2? Am I being too harsh? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.